Hi, I'm Katrina Redmond. I'm a food writer, a full-time working mum, and I live here in North County Fingal in Balbriggan, at the heart of where great food is grown and reared. So today, I want to show you how to create an extremely easy tray bake meal for when you have very little time on your hands and you want to feel, feed the masses. Today's tray bake is a very, very hearty, rustic, roasted dinner made using loads and loads of root vegetables. So, let me show you what we've got. We've got some very small and sweet little salad potatoes. We have, which I've already started to use this week, half of a ginormous sweet or turnip. This is not a roast ve root vegetable. This is a cooking apple. I've three decent sized carrots, I have an onion, and I have a butternut squash. And for meat, and bear in mind you don't have to have meat if you want to make this plant based, I have two packs of decent Cumberland sausages. This is designed to feed a family of between, let's say five and six, but if you have small kids you get more out of it. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to prepare all this veg. Because I'm using salad potatoes, I don't need to peel them, which takes an awful lot of the hassle out of it, but I am going to put, cut them into quarters lengthways. So it's literally just a case of cutting them into four quarters lengthways. It's much easier than having to peel them, and it means that I can fool the kids into thinking that they're eating chips, um, because all kids love food that they can eat in their hands. I love lashing something like this into the oven because I can work away in the house, homeschooling, reading with the kids, doing my own work, and then when it's ready, we just dish it up, and all I have to do is rinse off the plates. Next up, these carrots. They have been washed, but they do need a quick peel. Um, it's up to you whether or not you decide you want to keep the peels or not. You can use the peels to make a lovely vegetable stock or they are perfect for going straight into your bread or your compost bin. Three carrots. I'm just gonna to top and tail them. You probably remember earlier on that I mentioned that kids like to pick things up in their hands. So this is why I'm actually gonna cut the carrots in a similar manner that I cut the potatoes in. And once again, I'm cutting them into lengthways pieces so really, hopefully you can see, I've got four pieces there. Again, it's showing the kids that it's okay to pick up the food in their hand and to eat it if they like it. Turnip or Swede is a brassica. So it's a perfect overwinter vegetable and it's the kind of thing that you can pick up on a budget at the moment in the supermarket. Now do bear in mind that because of the brassica, it can taste very, very bitter. Um, and as I mentioned, it, it's extremely dense and takes a long time to cook in the oven when you roast it. And bearing in mind that I want all of my vegetables to cook at the same rate, unlike the carrots and the potatoes that have gone into the tray, I'm cutting this up very, very small. Otherwise, if I cut it up into the same size as the potatoes and the carrots, what would happen is that we would get to the end of the cooking process and I would have massive big uncooked chunks of turnip or swede in it and, um, <laughs> and I'd have um, perfect carrots and potatoes. So it's all about learning what cooks at what rate. Now, because it's a brassica and because it can taste bitter, I'm not gonna put that much in. This is more than enough. I've got a good handful of it here. And particularly when you have children and you're not sure what they're gonna eat or what they're gonna try, just a small amount of turnip when you're starting off is a good idea. Onion. And again, I'm only gonna use the one onion, so I'm just gonna peel this away. You can see I've got my shavings or my peelings at the side of the table. I'm just gonna peel away the brown layers. Onions classically should be kept in a brown paper bag, which will allow them to breathe. I'm literally going to quarter it, and then cut it into eighths, lengthways, because it will break up when cooking and when I mix all of this together with the oils. So again, there's my onions. It's quite pungent because it's been, it's an overwinter onion. So again, in there, I'm gonna take my peelings and I'm gonna pop it away. Now, the first thing I'm gonna to say to you about butternut squash is, this is not a root vegetable. Butternut squash grows on a vine. So you can expect it, um, you can expect it to take shorter amount of time to cook. The second thing I'm gonna to say to you is, 
you can pick this up pre-prepared in the freezer section of your local supermarket. I prefer to eat it fresh, um, but you can pick it up pre-prepared. So, um, we're not using that much of the squash today. The bottom part of the squash is where the seeds are. That can still be eaten, you can also cook the seeds off. I'm just leaving that for now, I'm gonna use it on another day. Um, I'm just taking the top and the tail off, and then that'll give me a flat surface to put it on, and then I literally just shave it down. I'm shaving it down the sides. Now, you can use a potato peeler, um, but you'd want an extremely sharp potato peeler for one, and second of all, it can take a long time. And when you have a sharp knife like this, it's just easier just to follow the curve of the skin and just shave it down. You don't need to be extremely exact. Actually, you can eat the skin if you want to. I just find it quite tough. Now, and um, I'm just going to cut it off into kind of chunky rounds. And then I'm gonna cut each round into, I suppose six, I would say, possibly eight. So here's my butternut squash and it will stay your hands red, <laughs> you have been warned um, and I'm literally just cutting it up. Now, so that's all my squash in, so let me show you how piled high this tray is now, literally full of roast vegetables. So I've got some lovely Cumberland sausages um, that are hand tied, so I'm just going to put them out and then pop them into the tray as well. So the tray is coming quite jam packed. Now if I was to cook this like a normal tray bake at about 180 degrees, it would take, it, it would brown on top, but you'd have to keep on coming back to check on, check on it to make sure that it's not burning on top. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to lower the temperature on this. I'm gonna cook it at between 150 and 160 degrees for a good hour, hour and a half. That gives it plenty of time to cook, but it also means that I don't have to keep on coming back to it because frankly, I'm gonna to be too busy. I've, I've got kids to keep an eye on, there's homeschool going on, etc., etc. So finally, the apple, the last thing I'm gonna put in. The apple adds a little bit of sweetness to the tray bake. It gives the kids a familiar flavor um, and it really breaks up the heavy root vegetable taste of the, of the tray bake. Apple goes extremely well with sausages, and with um, butternut squash. The apple is going to cook extremely quickly. So I want to have these chunks. They're gonna to go to mush, but they're going to flavor the sauce inside of the tray bake. This looks like a whopper tray bake. I'm literally just going to add a small amount of oil to make sure that nothing sticks together and then some seasonings. I'm not gonna make the seasonings too challenging because this is really aimed at all the family. Um, I often find that if I have members of the family who prefer spicy flavours, then I'll give them a sauce on the side. I've got some oregano. That's a great dried herb to add to a sausage tray bake. It gives a kind of um, well-rounded, earthy flavour. I've got some dried garlic and black pepper combination here. Again, really, really good with the roasted root vegetables. And finally, I've got a little bit of Atlantic sea salt. And now it's time for me to get my hands dirty again, but this is the one and only time that I'll have to get my hands dirty with oil and everything else. I'm gonna get my hands in, I'm gonna mix it all together, make sure that everything has a nice even coating of the oil and the seasoning, and then it's ready to put in the oven. My hands are covered in the seasoning and the tray bake is mixed. As I mentioned, it's going in the oven at between 150 and 160 degrees Celsius for 90 minutes. Normally a tray bake like this would take an awful lot shorter amount of time at a higher heat, but because I've put enough food in here for six people, I'm gonna lower the heat to let it all cook through. In about an hour's time, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna to toss it all together with a spoon just to make sure that everything's cooking evenly. I'll have some brown stuff on top, some less cooked things underneath, so I'll just turn it over to make sure that everything gets an opportunity to get a little bit of brown. 
For day two of the root vegetable sausage bake, it's actually a meal that you can have as a salad for lunch the following day, or even as a cold supper. You can, of course, heat it up in the pan on the hob. But I think that one of the things that lifts it on the second day of the meal is to make a very simple dressing. Now today, I am using a keep cup because it's absolutely perfect for making a salad dressing in and it'll keep in the fridge for a couple of days. So let me show you how easy this is to make. So I've opened up the cup, it's empty inside as you can see. We're going to use a little bit more of this Irish rapeseed oil. Not too much, let's just say about a tablespoon. But if you want, you can make a large batch of this. It's perfect for dressing your salad leaves over a couple of days. This keeps really well in the fridge. It will keep for a couple of weeks so long as you have the lid on. So I'm going to add a good glug because I'm going to use this over the next couple of days of rapeseed oil. And I have some balsamic vinegar here. Actually, any form of vinegar is perfect with this. If you have some Irish cider vinegar, add a small amount, although that can be quite pungent. Whatever vinegar you have to hand is quite good. You want to add about half as much vinegar as you have added oil. So I'm just going to give it a good glug. And I find that balsamic vinegar or a darker vinegar works really well with root vegetables. I've got some more of this salt, the Atlantic sea salt. You can, of course, use regular salt. I just like to use it. This one, as I said, has a little bit of chili in it, so it gives things a little kick. So it's two very, very small pinches there. And then finally, I have some lovely whole grain mustard. I'm gonna add in about a teaspoonful for the amount that I have. So about a level teaspoonful. So I'm just gonna pop that in. Now the beauty of using the keep cup is that providing you keep your hand over the hole you can give it a shake and it all stays within the cup so i've got my finger over the hole here of course if you have one that seals even better and then give it a good shake and this is my dressing for my sausage bake on a second day if you want the dressing to really really take to the root vegetables well then add it onto the root vegetables while it's still warm you can of course use this as a dressing for your meal anyway while you're eating it this is just a beautiful extra salad dressing that you can add on the second day to add an extra layer of flavor so let me show you what we have inside it hasn't spritzed everywhere i've just got a little bit now and in here we have a beautiful whoops emulsified salad dressing so all i have to do now is pop that in the fridge and that'll keep for, as I said, a couple of weeks. Use it to dress your salads whenever you want. And this is perfect for the second day of the sausage tray bake. It has been a long day in the home office and between that and juggling homeschooling the kids, I am just so glad I was able to lash this into the oven and not worry about it. The beauty of it being root vegetables is that I can prepare it in the morning and then leave it in the oven and turn the oven on when I'm ready to go. The only thing that I can't add until the last minute is those lovely, apples so for each person you can give them sausage and then a generous spoonful of those lovely roasted sweet root vegetables add some greens on top if you want to maybe another sausage if they are particularly hungry um, and as I said this is great finger food for kids who are weaning because you've got everything in kind of bite-sized chunks it's a great one for kids who have problems with fine motor skills and I have this lovely dressing that I made I can have it warm tonight in the tray bake and it's going to be just as lovely tomorrow for lunch so whatever you're getting up to this evening I hope that it is the least amount of stress and the least amount of waste and the least amount of cleaning up all I'm going to have to do when this is done is I'm going to decant whatever we don't eat into a bowl cover it for tomorrow and then I will take this liner out of the baking tray I'll pop it into the compost bin and that's it I'm done and as you can hear the dishwasher is whizzing away in the background I probably won't have to put it again on again for another two days well I hope you enjoyed this recipe if you'd like to find out more about this recipe or perhaps more of the activities that Fingolf County Council have to offer do check out their social media and their own website 